Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. All right, listen, man. Um, if you've been listening to me for a long time, uh, you know, you've read any of my books, Black Privilege, Shook One, then you know I always reference this brother that I'm about to talk to. Um, he goes by the name of Don Miguel Ruiz. He wrote a book called uh, The Four Agreements, which I think is a game changer. He wrote The Fifth Agreement. He wrote The Mastery of Love, The Voice of Knowledge. You know, those are just a few of his titles that I've read. And I'm happy that he's sitting down to have a conversation with me right now, uh, today, because I just feel like his principles, the Toltec wisdom, it's just something that we could all apply to the current situation that we're in, and we will all be better people for it. So here it is, my conversation with Don Miguel Ruiz. Well, first of all, Brother Don, um, I want to thank you for taking this time with me this morning. You have been one of my favorite authors, one of my favorite spiritualists, and during this moment we are currently in, your insight will be grace, greatly appreciated. So, so thank you, first and foremost. Well, it is my pleasure, and I, I really enjoy it. Yes, sir. Now, I, I want to start with, uh, you know, in Toltec wisdom, there are three fundamental masteries. The first one is the mastery of awareness. And mastery teaches us to be aware of what we, you know, uh, what, what we are, right? So, so during this global pandemic, everybody is home. So what is God trying to make us aware about right now? Well, I, I think it's very interesting because everybody have a great opportunity uh, that they can focus in themselves to see uh, to get the uh, first the question, what am I? Who am I? And is this real? Because when something like that happens, it challenges our beliefs, it challenges what we believe about ourselves, it challenges almost everything. And the other question, what is love really? Because love and life unless for me, it's the same thing. Everything is made by light, by life, by love. Then it's an opportunity that we have to see deep inside ourselves and see our own story and see how we uh, create, how we react to everything that happened around. It is an opportunity to start changing our reactions because we cannot control what is happening outside of us, but we can control the way we react. Mm. If we are aware of what we are or what we are not, it will be so easy. Even we can have advantage of whatever is happening because we don't play with fear. And this is extremely important. Like right now, the main problem is not the virus, is the fear that we have, yeah. what we create. Then we got so scared and it's so, it's so difficult for us to react in different ways. Then like I said, it's a big, a big opportunity for all of us to see what, what we really feel, what we really want, and to evaluate the priorities that we have. Because priority number one, is our own physical body. Because without our body, there's no way that we can express or feel or react. If we don't work, we have nothing to give. Mm. The second priority will be our children, our beloved, our family, that we really should care about them. We take care of them as the same way that they take care of us. The other priority will be the way of living or work, what we do for living. Because this will be the three main priorities that we should have. First, ourselves. I cannot give love if I don't exist. I can communicate if I don't exist. I mm. cannot protect if I don't exist. Mm. Then the people that we love the most, and then the work to give them what we can and receive, give, receive, then there comes the sense of community. Then we can see that uh, we are artists and we are creating all the time. It's an ongoing creation. Well, we have to begin with ourselves. First to recognize our own art. 
because whatever we do in life is art. We are artists even if we don't know, but we are. And we create all the time, just like the one who created us. We are just the same, but mm. we don't know, we don't understand, we don't have that awareness. Once that we have that awareness, now we can change, we can transform and adapting change as fast as life is changing. That is extremely important. And to love, to really love, because the way we learn to love is like everybody else love, which means we love with conditions. I love you if you let me control you. And you love me if I let you control me then it's not exactly love, but the opposite of love. Then we have to unlearn the way we learn to love. And then we can give and receive. Then I can say that love is um, equilibrium between gratitude and generosity. We need to give and we need to receive you know let's see if i love you your, re your reaction will be to love me back to mm -hmm. have the gratitude for what you're receiving and it is your gratitude you you even give more than what you receive and then i will be grateful for what i receive from you and i'm gonna give even more then we rise in love we don't fall in love. This is true for any kind of relationship in any direction, with our beloved, with our children, with our parents, with our brothers or sisters or friends, with everything around, even with nature, with our dog or cat. We have to be so grateful for everything that we receive. And we also can give the same way. What a stop the generosity is the selfishness of people. They are selfish and they stop you to give that you don't give anymore. Got you. So, so I feel like, you know, in this present moment, it's all about having gratitude and really, really tapping into what love is. Yeah. You know, we can, we can have even gratitude for this virus. They give us a big opportunity. You know, you see that the world looks so crazy for everything that we do, what we don't do, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it's a moment to step back and see what is going on, not only outside, but inside, which is the most important part. We can see that we can love ourselves with no conditions. When we love ourselves, now we can give, we can love. Mm -hmm. It is not important if they receive or not receive our love. What is important is love coming out of us because the body is feeling that love. And this is what the body loves the most, feeling love coming out. Wow. In, in your book, um, The Voice of Knowledge, you speak on inner peace and taming the inner voice inside you. And, you. and you'd say you do it with two rules. Don't believe yourself and don't believe anybody else. So with everybody glued to the TV and all the information about this virus coming at, coming at us, some good, some bad, how do you apply those two rules to what we are going through right now? Well, this is extremely simple. You know, everybody will share or give what they believe. And what they say could be truth for them, but not necessarily is truth for you. Then we don't believe, not because we are superior or, or because we judge them that they don't know. No, they share what they believe is true. But we don't have to believe whatever they say, but we can listen, that's the most important part. Listen what they say, and then you make your own decisions. And many people uh, speak with a lot of fear. See how many people are dying, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, uh, 
the virus, it is a problem, of course. But the main problem is people's reaction, how we react. Because we react with fear. And we can create many other problems than just the virus. And we can die for something else, not exactly the virus. Mm -hmm. Then when that becomes pandemic, it's a pandemic fear. Mm -hmm. Forget about the virus, it's real, it's true. But the consequences can be worse than the problem. The medicine can be worse than the disease. Mm. And we see that all around the world. We can see that everybody is so afraid, cannot even touch you or be close to you. Well, you know, we have worse, worse plagues than, than this. More people die before for whatever reason. More people die in accidents by crime, you know. It's like, it's like you gotta let go of what you can't control, basically. Yes, fear is the biggest problem. Yeah. We make it so big. And if we have that fear, that's what we will share. If we have love, we give love. We can help more if we are not afraid. What's the worst thing that can happen to us? To die? To well, die. What will die sooner or later? And it's okay. I don't want to be 90 years old and hardly can walk and still uh, living. No. You know, life, uh, death is wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's just transformation. And everything we, de we did in our life is been dying little by little. Like I getting out of the college, it was a moment of death. And the fear of what's gonna happen after, what are I gonna do, how are we gonna work? And this in all the different directions to discover the mysteries. As soon as you discover a mystery, it's no longer a mystery. But once you discover that bring more mysteries, and this is life. It's a big mystery school. When we was born, we had no knowledge. It was a mystery to hear our parents talking. We imitated and we learned a language. We mastered that language. We go to elementary school, we don't know what's gonna happen there. We learn to, to write, to mathematics, whatever. We, we are um, uh, solving mysteries after mysteries after mysteries. It is always the, uh, the desire to know and the fear. Then it's an equilibrium there too. Mm -hmm. then life is very simple we make it complicated. Yes, many diseases exist, exist cancer, AIDS, a lot of different diseases, and we will die from one of those. Then the, the consequences has been so big because the fear, which is okay. You know, everybody do the best they can, even if they don't know what they can allow themselves to do and allow other people to do or not to do. But life is simple, we complicate everything. Mm. And yes, uh, they say what they believe, it's up to us to believe it or not. You know, like uh, you live in your, in your own body, you live in your own mind and you are the main character of your own mind. If you accumulate all the knowledge that you have, and yes, you need to share it to give, to tell everybody. And this is your truth, but not necessarily is mine or your brother or your sister or your parents or whoever. They make their own decisions. Then when we have that awareness, the way to relate with each other is with a magical word that is respect. I respect whatever you believe you have the right to to believe whatever you want to, but I don't have to believe it. But if I hear you and I agree with you, now I believe it. Mm. And you can change my life in, in, in that direction. But it's because I decide that yes, I agree with what you say, and now we can work together and give it even more. But sometimes I may not agree, 
I respect that it's okay for you to believe whatever, but I take my own decision. Respect is extremely important. With respect, we can have the best relationship ever. Not just with your beloved, but with your own children, your brothers, your sisters, your parents, but mainly with yourself. When you have that kind of relationship with yourself that you respect yourself, you live in peace. You no longer allow those voices in your head to tell you all those lies that we tell to ourselves all the time because we create so many conflicts in our head. Mm. There's so many voices, many, many, many people who, who tell you what you are seeing, what you know. Then if you can control that, you got that peace. And you live in peace, which is, is it is really wonderful. And yes, you share with everybody, whoever wants to listen, good. Who want to believe, good also. And if not, then it's okay. They have the right to believe it or not to believe it. But this is our real freedom. Because the, the only thing that really stops our freedom is ourselves, our own fears, our own beliefs, our own domestication. Because we was domesticated and we really believe that's the rule, that's the law. And that don't allow us to be what we really are, even if we don't know what we are. Because wow. it's really important to know what we are. You know, like your dog doesn't know that it's a dog. We call him dog. Your dog doesn't know and don't care. He's just <laughs> a dog and he's enjoying it. Just enjoying life. Uh huh. Then yeah. we are humans because we call ourselves humans. But really, you know, I have a name, Miguel Ruiz. And that identifies me. But am I really Miguel Ruiz? I don't even choose my name. But it's okay, I can be whatever is that important. What is important is that I'm here, I am alive, and I enjoy it. Mm. That's the yeah. best point, to enjoy life. You know, um, I, I love the four agreements. Uh, the second agreement, don't take anything personally. That seems almost impossible to do in this social media era because we're always you know, constantly having random people saying things to us online. But I, I wanted to ask you, because, you know, you're, 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 you're Mexican. When, when Donald Trump says such harsh things about Mexicans, how do you not take that personally? Well, because I don't believe it. It's not true whatever he's saying. I just don't believe it. Oh. You have the right to believe whatever he wants to. It doesn't affect me. I will not go against him. No, it's just another human who's trying to do the best in, in whatever everybody bought for him. Well, it's there. There's nothing we can do about that. It's okay until it's no longer okay. How do you know when it's not okay? Well, this is just a point of view. Gotcha. It's what I believe. You can believe it or not believe it. It's just one point of view and it's not really that important. Yeah. I always say that um, a lie is a lie, regardless of how many people believe it. And the truth is the truth, regardless if nobody believes it. Exactly. Then it's easy to see what is lie. But to see what is truth is not that easy, even that is just in front of us all the time. And there's no words to explain the truth. It just exists, even if we believe it or not. But when we try to explain the truth, we have to use kind of lies because it's not exactly true what we say. Mm. Uh -huh. And when we have that awareness, now we know, okay, uh, I don't have to believe myself, but it's the only way that I have in order to explain what I experience, what I believe, to share with others my point of view and to listen their point of view. What, one of your, what, one of your, so important, like we, we say before. Another one of your books I love is The Fifth Agreement. Uh, be skeptical, but listen. And I feel like that's one of the most important agreements you can stand on in this country right now. Why, why do you feel that agreement is so necessary? Well, it is the most important one. We can see that the first four agreements is in order to 
face the fifth one. Be skeptical, but learn to listen. And it's for what we just talked a little before. You live in your own story that you create. And you create a, a main character with this you. And in your story, there's a lot of secondary characters. Every person that you know is a secondary character in your story. The real ones have nothing to do with the secondary characters in your story, like your parents, brother, sister, beloved. This is just how you see them, how you perceive them, and only their only truth in your mind. The same way in their mind, you are only a secondary character. It only, they only know about you what they believe that you are, but it's so far to the truth. Mm -hmm. Then be skeptical means that you don't have to believe anybody because you know that is the main character of their story, the one who is speaking. Mm. And it's their truth, it's not your truth. But you learn to listen, then you hear the message that they're giving to you. And with the things that you agree, you keep it. The rest, you don't need it. Mm. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. You have the right to tell the entire world what you believe. They can believe you or not. Then what they say, see about you is just a um, secondary character in their mind. It's not the real you. Because sometimes not even ourselves know ourselves. See? Mm -hmm. Then when you get that point, you don't believe, then you listen, you take actions. But the most important part is that you don't have to believe yourself. All what you learn, all what you, all your ideas, you don't have to believe it. But if you listen to yourself, then you use the power of the doubt to see, is that true what I believe in? Is that true what I'm saying? And when you discern that, you will let go so many of the lies that you tell to yourself. Mm. And you release yourself from the stop doing it, what you believe is wrong for you. And you can enjoy life even more and more. Because this fifth agreement release you completely from yourself. That's why it's the most important one. Because at the end you will find out that you don't even know what you are, but it's okay you are. You see that most of the things that you believe are not truth. All what you learn is not truth. Only stays very few ones, very few concepts, but you have all the language, mm -hmm. the different languages, not just the language that you speak, but music and other kind of languages that we also have. And you don't even need to explain the truth because you perceive it. And when you see deep in yourself, you see that you are the truth. And you cannot really explain it. It makes no sense to explain it either. Mm -hmm. Because everybody will hear only an opinion. You will not convince everybody else about what you really are, even if you know what they are also, but they don't know what they are. But you respect it. You can see how they create their mind, how they have all those beliefs, how they slave themselves and blame everybody outside for what they do to themselves. Then when you know that, it's so easy to change as fast as life is changing. That's, I, that's why I don't, I don't see this coronavirus like the big deal. But everybody will live the big deal. I respect. Then just for respect, I go outside with my mask and keep the distance or whatever. It doesn't matter. But personally, it doesn't affect me at all because I know. Worst thing that I get the corona. Then I get sick and then I die. Anyway, I'm gonna die sooner or later. 
It's all out of your control. Yeah. And yeah. meanwhile, I keep creating, I keep writing. I can do it the best I can to enjoy life in all the different directions. I don't play with that fear. Then if people can see it, that point of view, perhaps they can change a little or, per or perhaps not. But it's okay, they have the right to explore their own life, to live their own life in the way they want to. They can be a big problem, okay, they can solve problems. We all have people around us that we love and that we trust and we, we, we accept their word and embrace their word. So, so is there ever a time to not be skeptical? Uh, no. Okay. Be skeptical doesn't, doesn't mean that you don't believe it really. Mm -hmm. You understand and you understand that they do the best they can, they speak the best they can, and it's okay. They have the right to do that the same way that you have the right to do that. And you embrace them. If they hurt themselves, they go up to your arms, you hug them and you give them your love. And it's okay, but you cannot live their life. The worst thing that we can do is just try to control them and tell them how to live their life. No, they have the right to do that. The same way that we have the right to live our own life. Then respect is the key word, respect. Mm -hmm. But to give respect, first we have to respect ourselves. We cannot give what we don't have. Then I respect whatever you do 100%. It doesn't mean that I agree with everything that you do, no. But you have the right to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. I just have a couple more questions for you, Brother Don. Um, one of your four agreements is don't make assumptions. Can I make optimistic assumptions and assume that the best is yet to come in this world? Okay. Now you know that it's better not to make assumptions, but then you decide, I want to make this assumption. Mm -hmm. You are deciding to do it. And yes, you do it, but you don't know if that will be real or not, which is okay. Mm -hmm. I decide to trust you. I decide to, you know, but you know you're doing it. That's what is important, you know you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Because we live in society, we cannot avoid that interaction with everybody. But first priority is ourself. Then I know that anyone can change their mind at any given moment. Why did, why did, mm -hmm. okay, I'm sorry. I said, why, did, why does it feel like in this moment there's such a shift in consciousness and how people are approaching spirituality and their mental health? Why do you think now, in this moment? Well, because what is happening all around is pushing us to see ourselves, to go inside ourselves. And we are searching for, for the answers of those questions. What am I? Is that real? How can I do this better? Is that really love? You know, in order for you to know what you are, first you have to see what you are not. Mm. I'm not this, I'm not that, and whatever is left is closer to what you really are. About reality, is that real? Is that not real? Just to take away everything that is not real, and what we stay is what is closer to what is real. And the same thing with love. In order to know what love is, you have to see what love is not. Mm. Because all those conditions, they are not love. Then what is left will be love. And we have to apply it first to ourselves. Once I have that love for myself that has always been there, but we didn't know, then we can share it and give it. And it's no longer important if it's welcome or not. If it's not welcome, you just don't give it in that direction. You, but that don't change you because now you have that peace in yourself. 
Mm -hmm. You love yourself, you respect yourself, you take care of yourself, then you can do the same with other people. But if you're angry with yourself, you're only going to give anger to everybody around you. If you're jealous of yourself, you're going to share jealousy wherever you go. If you don't like yourself, you will not like a lot of people. A lot of people say, um, you know, it's very positive. I mean, it's very, it's very easy to stay positive when, when you have money and, you know, you, you're kind of well off. So, you know, staying, staying in alignment while all this chaos is around us, when, when you've lost your job, money isn't coming in, you have to think how you feed your family, that's hard. So how would you tell somebody to stay in alignment through all that when they're in this condition, when they're in that condition? Well, do you think it's true what you just said? That your money, you're happy? No. It's not true. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the extreme poverty, I see many people being happy and they complain, of course. And I see people very rich, they complain also. But they live in completely different worlds. Somebody that is very rich don't understand middle class or don't understand uh, poverty. Someone who lives in po poverty, they don't understand this other world. He, they can wish but they adjust to whatever world they live because it's what they know. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, we, and yes, with our creation, we can create more. We can change levels. You know, for example, if you wake up in Japan tomorrow and you don't speak that language, you will not understand anybody, but you will see another way of living another way of belief, a different kind of religion. Then the idea comes, okay, which one is real? Who is, is, is that true what they believe or is true what I believe? Then you come back to the States after have all that experience, you will see everything will change. There's different worlds. And you see uh, very poor people being happy, middle-class people being happy, rich people being happy, and the opposite be miserable mm -hmm. because it will depend more the, of the individual and how we adapt to life, how do we adapt to society. Got you. There's a lot of billions of people in this world and everybody live in their own world, in their own mind, in, in their own creation because they cre recreate the, 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 what is real. It's so parallel true. realities, billions. So happiness is just a state of mind. It doesn't matter if you're rich. It doesn't matter if you're poor. Mm -hmm. It's here. Exactly. It's how you deal with the first priority, which is yourself. Oh, got you. Mm -hmm. my, my final question for you, um, where do you see us going from here? Well, we will recover because uh, is not forever and we will keep evolving we will see uh, better generations coming but also we, we will see the opposite also then it's not the end of war it's not the end of none of those it just keep changing but if you compare worlds the way we live now the way we used to live a thousand years ago is a huge difference. And it doesn't mean that we're better or worse. No, we're just different. But yes, we are evolving. In the last 20, 30 years, we evolved very fast. That the other 100 years before, or 200 years before. Then we can shift in and change in. And we're searching for the same things. We are really searching for ourselves to our own personal freedom. Mm. Free from ourselves, of course. Don Miguel Ruiz, thank you very much for this time that you blessed me with this morning. I really appreciate it. I've been reading your work for a long, long time. And Toltec wisdom is something that I try to apply to my, my life on a daily. And I don't always get it right. But as the fourth agreement says, I always do my best. 
Well, thank you very much to give me a big opportunity to share myself with you and whoever listened to you. Thank you very I'm much. Doing that for everybody until the moment I go, I will keep <laughs> going and going and going. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Okay, you're very welcome. And Thank you. Enjoy every moment, please. Yes, sir. Blessings to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye bye.